production of Broad and High is funded in part by the Greater Columbus Arts Council, supporting arts, advancing culture, and connecting the community to artists, events, and classes at columbusmakesart.com. PNC, committed to Central Ohio, for the achiever in you. From these contributing sponsors and viewers like you, thank you. This time on Broad and High, explore the ancient craft of water marbling with a Delaware-based artist. It's a fascinating art form. It's very easy. It doesn't look easy, but anybody can do it. Meet a portrait artist whose talent is all exaggeration. And a performance by the local pop R&B duo known as England Street. I just want you to be free. Don't want to waste your time. Cause I don't want to This and more right now on Broad and High. Hi everyone, welcome to Broad and High. I'm your host, Kate Quickle. Our first story tonight explores the art of water marbling. It's a centuries old craft that was most commonly used to make those colorful end papers we find inside the covers of old books. Well, we traveled up to Delaware to meet Susan Lichty to see how it's done 21st century style. We are water marbling. It's an ancient art that has been around since the 9th and 10th century. It used to be strictly for books and um, the covers of books and the inside of the book covers. And then it sort of started to disappear after the creation of the printing press and manufacturing of the books and not done by hand. It's a fascinating art form. Um, it's very easy. It doesn't look easy, but anybody can do it. We start out with a white silk scarf and drop the colors onto the water. The, the, the tray holds um, a thickened water. The water's thickened with, it's called carrageenan, which is seaweed. And it's mixed with water and it becomes gelatinous. So it has to be heavier than what the paint is. So the paint will float. And I use acrylic paint so that the paint is dropped into droplets on top of the water. And then we have probably a half a dozen tools. And all it is is taking those tools and dragging them through the water and your designs change after each pass. Or you can be that person who just takes a skewer and goes. So depending on what kind of design you want, the tool does all the work. You're not doing the work, you're dragging the tool through the water and it creates your design for you. No two can be alike. <laughs> um, this is 100% silk. Um, it's called Habito silk. Um, after they're treated and ironed, then they will go into the water to really absorb all the paint. So then I have to, we go through and we just fold down the edges because they're rolled edges and the paint won't get over the top of it unless you push it down a little bit. So you ready to see it? My husband Jerry got involved in um, helping with this water marbling business because honestly it cannot be done by one person if you're doing the larger uh, scarfs like what we do. Paper you can do on your own. Um, these are a couple different designs of books that I do. These are the hardcover um, in canvas and then my paper goes on the inside and this is what is called end papers. The whole idea of end papers was to hide all of the spine and everything inside the book that was not always attractive. But it takes two to hold the scarf and drop it in the water. Yeah, you can't do this by yourself. We've tried different ways and it just doesn't work very well. This one's called an octopus design. This is a design called feathers. Find one here that's done by hand. This is done with a skewer. Um, we just drop the paints in the water and we take a, a wooden skewer 
through the designs. And this one's called a fountain because obviously it's got that design that flows that way. Probably our favorite pattern that we do the most of is called bouquet. And it's a very elegant old design from about the 1700s. You know, 500 years ago they did this. This was a huge business in Italy and France and England. It's unique. Nobody else is going to have one like it when I walk down the street. <laughs> Isn't that interesting when it's out? Learn more about the art of water marbling by visiting Susan's Facebook page. You can also find her at suesilkcreations.com. Next up is a story that focuses on a very specialized form of portraiture. The work of John Cashed can be found in the National Portrait Gallery in Washington, in publications across the country, and right now at the Billy Ireland Cartoon Library and Museum right here in Columbus. And it's all caricature. The exhibit originated in the artist's hometown of Waukesha, Wisconsin. It features a star-studded collection of satirical portraits and offers a thought-provoking look at the serious intent behind some funny pictures. Here's more on Making Faces. There's a conception, and it's a misconception, that caricature is about distortion. What makes people think of distortion is that it's very exaggerated, it's very amplified, but there's a big difference there. I'm amplifying in the direction of what makes that person unique. My name is John Cash, and I'm a caricaturist. Caricature is not cartooning, it's not illustration, it's not a comic strip. Caricature is a very specialized form of portraiture. Like all portraitists, caricaturists are interested in nailing the likeness. What it is is an investigation into exactly what makes a person unique, and you, f you find the things that make you different from everybody else, and then those things get amplified. And the more of the nuances that make that person unique that I can observe and then get into a drawing, the more complete the likeness is. And the, and the greater the recognition on the part of the person looking at it where they say, yes, I recognize that person. I was very much that kid in the back of class drawing the teachers. And the thing about me is I never stopped. I'm still kind of drawing the teachers or the authority figures anyway, but now it's politicians, performers, you know, that kind of thing. I've drawn primarily celebrities or you know, notable public figures. So when I'm drawing an idea that I have, I usually do very quick thumbnail sketches just to kind of start mapping out the, the way the piece could look. I draw on vellum, transparent vellum, so that if I have a, something in a sketch that I like, I'll slide it under a fresh sheet, draw over the top of it, and keep the parts I like, don't keep the parts I don't like, until eventually I've got the fully realized sketch that I want to paint from. I use watercolor and paint in light layers of glaze. Ideally, if I have 16 hours to 20 hours on something, you know, obviously each piece has its own requirements, but 16 to 20 hours is a great amount of time for me for an average piece in my style. The Waukesha County Historic Society Museum was founded in 1914, so we've got more than 100 years uh, behind us of celebrating what this region, what Waukesha County has to offer in the world and what impacts we've made in the world. Making Faces is our feature exhibition. The artist John Cash is originally from uh, Waukesha, city of Waukesha, graduate of Catholic Memorial High School, just a mile and a quarter down the road from here. Uh, and so a really lovely way to celebrate someone from this part of the world and, and to really take and appreciate his accomplishments. The wonderful nature of the work that John does is that he as the artist gets to retain very often the original that he makes. And so he's been kind of sitting on this incredible back catalog, uh, 30 years worth of work. The exhibition here is a collection of about 100-ish pieces that are my favorites. 
Bill Murray is one of the large format prints and we put him kind of front and center right inside the gallery space as you walk in. So we really start with just in general what goes into his caricature and portraiture work, things like body language and also what the process is to get to a finished product and really take people on that journey from appreciating what this art form can be when it's done to the expert level that John's able to achieve on through its multiple iterations and, and kind of uses. My favorite piece is the first piece of work he ever sold. It's a political cartoon that he sold to the Waukesha Freeman. One day I just went down to the Waukesha Freeman offices with a bunch of my drawings of the teachers, of family members, and I just, I went in and asked to see the editor, because I had in my mind that I wanted to do political cartoons, because that's where I was seeing caricature work. Jim Houston is his name, he was the editor of the Freeman at the time. I think because he was puzzled, he agreed to meet with me. I was 14, and amazingly, he said I could submit cartoons to them. He, and in retrospect, I realized he did me a great favor, a great service there, professionally. He took me seriously at that age. And I started identifying myself as, as a professional. And to, to start with that piece, and to be able to see everything that's come after that is just this incredible story of what a lifetime of work can do. My favorite things in the exhibition actually are the sketches, because to me, that's where the creativity really is. The likeness is happening or it's not. And when it's not, boy, it can be tough. But then when I finally capture it, it it's really still, to me, feels like a miracle when that person is looking back at me from the paper. With caricature, you think of, you know, big nose, big chin, big ears. That stuff's all part of it, but so are nuances like a person's particular skin tone. Do they slouch? Do they sit up straight? How, do they use their hands a lot? Are they more contained and don't reveal much? All of those nuances convey ultimately who we are on the inside. I'm still amazed that how we hold ourselves outwardly says so much and, and says so accurately who we are on the inside. I feel in some ways I'm trying to learn about myself one person at a time. Our local music series continues tonight with a performance by the Columbus-based pop R&B duo known as Ingram Street. Brothers Woody and Miguel Ingram brought their silky voices to the WOSU studio, where they were accompanied by Wib Schneider on guitar. Here they are performing their song, Free. I see a silhouette Above the fireplace, right past the main staircase, I recollect You wanna talk to me because you still believe there's been some neglect But there's two sides to this story, so don't rush and try in a hurry The things I wanna say, if you don't wanna be mine I just want you to be free, don't wanna waste your time Cause I don't wanna be what you want me to be If you don't wanna be mine I just want you to be free I don't wanna waste your time Cause I don't wanna be what you want me to be Now, now, no, no I know you know that it's been a while since we had the chance to try to work things out But the tension's so high that you can't deny we want to scream and shout But I gotta be a man and I'll let you know girl that I can't transform the fear inside your world So what are we gonna do if you don't wanna be mine? 
I just want you to be free Don't want to waste your time Cause I don't want to be what you want me to be If you don't want to be mine I just want you to be free Don't want to waste your time Cause I don't want to be what you want me to be now Seems all I ever do Is all the give and take Draining all I have Leaving an empty glass While your stay is full The sign is on the door For you to fly away Cause you're living so selfishly You don't wanna be mine oh. I just want you to be free I don't wanna waste your time. Waste your time. Cause I don't wanna be. Cause what I don't you wanna be. If you don't wanna be I mine. I don't wanna set you free. I just want you to be free. I don't want you. I don't want to. 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 I've been giving you the best of me, so hit the door, the love we had in mind, and I, girl, you got to understand, understand, I love you, girl, and I never want to take that away. You don't want to be mine I just want you to be free Don't want to waste your time Cause I don't want to be what you want me to be If you don't want to be mine I just want you to be free Don't want to waste your time Cause I don't want to be what you want me to be Finally tonight, a visit to Nimby Acre Farm and Fiber Shop, where Rachel Noonan introduces us to her fiber flock, the llamas, alpacas, and angora rabbits in her backyard farm in Knox County. Their fiber lines the shelves of her retail shop in downtown Mount Vernon, which also serves as a community gathering space for the knitters, weavers, and fiber enthusiasts in the region. Here's her story. Come show how pretty you are. Come show how pretty you are. So this is Sabine. And she's the tamest because I've had her since she was born. So the reason I got llamas is because um, I worked with people with disabilities. And I looked into equine therapy. We looked into dog grooming and boarding. And then I met llamas and they're just like, so chill. And so I found out for myself what made a good day for me was spending time in the barn <laughs> with the animals. A way better day than being in the office. And so I put a few alpacas and a few llamas and a few angora rabbits and I had my own little fiber flock in my backyard and I've been super excited ever since. Do you see alpacas have little pointy ears? And llamas have big curved banana shaped ears. So I, I quit my job and I've had a wonderful time. I have no stress. I'm, I'm happy. It's fun. I love creating and I love teaching. So we are at 227 South Main Street in downtown Mount Vernon at NIMBY Acre Fiber Art. I like small farms now that I am one and I like helping people that are raising their own animals and so most things here are small farm or small animal, you know, they're locally sourced as much as possible. 
So um, an alpaca has much denser fleece than a llama. So I can get three times the amount of fiber from an alpaca than I can a llama. So once a year, the llamas and alpacas are shorn, usually in late spring. And I end up with a, a big trash bag full of fiber. And then I wash it in my kitchen sink that's here. And then I spin it. And then it's ready to be woven or knit into something. So I have two Angora rabbits. All right, Pearly Girly. This is Pearl Jam. She's an English Angora and her face gets very fluffy. Last night I trimmed a lot of it off. So her hair will just come out by doing this to it. This is called plucking. Last night I was brushing her out and all of this came from just brushing her last night. This is Angora fiber and it makes dreamy, soft yarn and clothing. But it doesn't hurt the animals to use their fiber. It's better for your skin, it's better for the environment. It breathes. They have a lot have anti-bacterial um, purposes. They wick moisture away. So natural fibers are just so much nicer. I, I would love to be a knitter, but what I truly love to do is weave. When I did the store, I wanted to have a place that you could buy products to do your own knitting and spinning and weaving. I wanted a studio space, so I also use all the looms. And then I put a couch and a lounge area in the back, so if anyone wants to come and sit and knit, there's no cost. They know that there's supplies here. If they run out, they can buy more. So I feel that everyone has something that they were meant to do. Okay, and when on, you sweetie. find your true calling, you have a lot of peace and joy. And I feel that everything I did in my life led me to the point I am now. But it's really cool in your 50s to find what you're passionate about and what you love and, and to be able to just fully embrace it. So yeah, I'm pretty happy and passionate. So find what you love and do it. Well, that's our show. You can find all of our stories online at WOSU.org, as well as on our free WOSU public media mobile app. And be sure to give us a follow on social. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're closing out the show today with more music by Ingram Street. For all of us here at WOSU, I'm Kate Quickle. Thanks for watching, no and we'll see you back here next week. What I'm doing, I think of you instead. And that's why I can't get you out of my mind. Thinking about you all the time. Can't get you out of my head. Even when I lie in bed I try not to think so much about you, babe But I can't I just keep seeing your pretty face Over and over again Movement Foot is a group of tap dancers here in Columbus, adult tap dancers. We really sort of gelled as a company, I would say, in 2015. Right now there are six of us um, who are sort of the core group. We're all people who are adults, we have jobs or we're in school, uh, but tap is the artistic outlet that we have um, that brings us joy, you know, to get together and do it on a weekly basis and then to be able to uh, perform it for the public. I think for a lot of people, 
if they, especially here in Columbus, haven't probably seen much tap dance, I think they're gonna be surprised. Because again, if you think about like when you've seen tap dance and you've seen it in the movies, you've seen Singing in the Rain, it's not, we, we don't look like Singing in the Rain. Columbus is a big city, so there are obviously a lot of dancers, and there are a lot of people who are doing tap dance. There are a lot of studios, a lot of classes being offered, um, a lot of really good classes being offered, um, but I haven't found in Columbus there to be a community around tap dancing specifically. So one of the things that we're trying to do as we develop and as we grow, hopefully, is to serve as a resource for people in Columbus who are interested in tap dancing, both who want to see tap dancing as audience members, who want to do tap dancing either through classes or who want to perform, um, so that hopefully we can start to grow more of an appreciation and a practice of this dance form here in Columbus. Catch Columbus at its creative best on Broad and High, Thursday nights at 8 o'clock on WOSU-TV. Production of Broad and High is funded in part by the Greater Columbus Arts Council, supporting arts, advancing culture, and connecting the community to artists, events, and classes at columbusmakesart.com. PNC, committed to Central Ohio, for the achiever in you. From these contributing sponsors, and viewers like you. Thank you.